Good evening and salutations, my JH fans. Um, let's talk about Austin for a minute. Austin has been in town for a good minute. And besides the whole thing with Maxi and the whole thing with the quarter mains, which was great stuff, okay? His story has just slowed down, really. And I know a lot of people still aren't feeling Austin, and you know what? I get it. But after a while, I kind of just accept it. You know, it, it really comes down to, I mean, I guess in some ways it comes down to how I feel about on Days of Our Lives with Ben, now I'm being Alex. You know, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but you know what? I'm with it. I just wasn't with the slow pace of where his story is going. And now it's actually picking up. Because the minute that he gets, the minute that Austin gets there, you know, Spinelli is not there talking about Maxi. Oh, I found somebody else. And you know, at this point, we all know that he's talking about Maxi. The thing that's just so odd about this sudden feelings about Maxi is that they haven't been together in a hot minute, okay? He's been with somebody else for the longest time. And it's like, it's almost as though Bro, how long were you pining over this girl? Anyway, Austin comes in. And I'm not going to lie, the scene's a little kind of uncomfortable because you, you know, at this point, it's like watching one of those romantic comedies when you know that the guy's into the girl, but they're just kind of friends, and this other guy comes in, and he's all cool and swag and everything like that. So it just felt really kind of awkward, to be honest. But then, I don't even know what this guy is. This boy had a guy comes in there and automatically causes a bit of tension. And I'm not going to lie. I was actually here for it because it, it woke my ass up. Um, talking about, oh, well, you know, he's my cousin or whatever. And, you know, we're so proud of him. And we want him when he's come back to the family fold and this, that, and the third. And... You know, also it's like, hey, you know, I'm here, I'm staying here, and that's what that really matters, and, you know, just my home now. So Maxi decides to invite this man, who she doesn't even know for Adam, to the um, quarter mains picnic. And I'm just like, are you even allowed to actually be inviting people to this picnic? I mean, I don't know how this thing is, like, really made or served or anything like that. I don't know if you need tickets, but it just seemed kind of odd. And it's, it's also kind of odd because it's like the fact that Maxie couldn't sit there and read Austin feeling all comfortable, I mean, all uncomfortable. And there's one point where his attention goes to Maxie and even Spinelli just stands up like, no, no, no. She's, uh, like, she had, he had that look like she's off limits pretty much. Um, but I, I don't know. Um, I don't really understand why she... I don't want to sit there and say she has one of those maxi moments, like one of those ditzy moments, because she can actually be really smart at times. But, you know, for the sake of the plot, we're going to sit there and dumb her down a notch and um, just, you know, it is what it is, I guess. I'm going to be honest, and I, I've said this before, Molly has been on this show since she was like five or something, okay? She's been on this show for a very long time. And I feel like this is another one of those situations where it's like they don't really they don't really do much with her. I feel like they can do so much more with this character who has practically grown up on this show. And she is just wasted. Wasted. Hell, even TJ gets more lines, more scenes, and, you know, a little bit more of a story than she does. And she's been on the show for, I don't want to sit there and say forever, but she's been on the show for a long time. Anyway, you got Davis Girls, you got Molly, you got Christina, which is another character that I am seriously hoping they're not going to waste. And they got Sam, which is um Sam. We'll just leave it at that. 
they're all just not there catching up and when it comes to her Sam's turn, you know, she talks about Dante and uh, I don't know, on one hand, I understand where she's coming from as far as going over the house and being uncomfortable because Lulu stuff is there and it feels like Lulu is still there and the fact that, you know, some of the stuff isn't going, but Alexis is like, that's probably for Rocco's sake. But I just kind of look at this whole thing and I'm like, where has this insecurity kind of came from? I mean, I get it. I guess I get it somewhat because, you know, now they're talking about moving in and she's like, well, if things aren't broken, you know, why sit there and try to fix it? And I'm just like, because it's called progress. It's called moving forward. And, you know, after talking with Alexis, she goes over to see Dante, which Dante is, he's all like, oh, maybe I pushed it too far. Maybe, you know, I rushed it too soon. I'm like, are you going at a snail's pace? Like, like I, don't, I mean, granted, I get it. They've been together, I guess they've been together for like maybe like a year and a half, but I'm just like, how long is it going to take before you decide if you know if you're ready to move in or not, you know? I mean, it's not like, I don't want to think that they, that's like the natural course, but like, anyway, he's all afraid, and, you know, Olivia tries to give him some advice as far as, you know, just staying with it, don't sit there and kind of hide your feelings and say how you feel. So towards the end, Dante's like, hey, you know, you don't have to sit there and move in yet. We can sit there and just take this nice and slow. And I'm just like, how slow? How, how slow are we, how slow are we going to sit there and go on this whole thing? Like, I don't know. It is weird because I'm sitting there like, they're going too slow, but then I'm sitting there looking at Finn and Liz and they're already sitting there talking about I love yous and they haven't even really went on any dates really, but Sure, whatever. Um, Gregory's not there talking to Ben. Liz cuts her hand on the um, vial. CJ checks her out. And when they're walking outside, you know, she comes across a door that says stairs. And she has a bit of a little flashback moment, but not really. And then, and then nothing really happens of it. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. I mean, yeah, Finn does come in there, he starts to apologize, and she lies about, um, you know, how she cut her hand. Oh, I only did it because you and Terry are making me upset, girl, and I'm like, okay, sure, um, let's just keep that going. So, you know, she's all like, oh, I don't want to sit there and keep fighting, and, you know, let's just, let's just kind of chill out, and she's like, he's like, yeah, fine, whatever, so she leaves. You know what Ben does? Ben calls her parents. Okay? Ben calls her parents. I'm pretty sure Gregory was like, you need to sit there and, and have some respect for her boundaries. Okay? He even called her, he even called Ben out on the fact that he's overcompensating because he couldn't sit there and save his wife. I'm like, okay. He brought that to your attention. What are you going to do? I'm going to call her parents. Okay, sure. Um, that makes sense. Don't get me wrong. I'm On one hand, I'm happy that he called her parents because at least things can start to move forward a little bit. I mean, hell, yesterday we got like a flashback. I was like, okay, cool. We're getting somewhere. And today it was just like... I guess we're not doing a damn thing. Okay, that's fine. That makes sense. There's some scenes with Gregory and Alexis, and to be honest, it I guess they do their little flirty banter or whatever the hell you want to sit there and call it. While it was there, so she made the scene a lot better because otherwise it just would have been um, well, pretty much unbearable. Unbearable because of that. The fact that you got two talented ladies. Molly, the actress that plays Molly and Christina, and it's just like, what are we doing with that? It, it infuriates me. It, it seriously infuriates me. Because, you know, Christina has come a long way from being the bratty child, being resentful of Sonny, to, you know, really being there for Sonny, going through her ups and downs with Kiefer and the professor and 
and I honestly tell you the truth, and I, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna sit there and say this about that whole professor storyline. I didn't have a problem with that. Okay, she was literally legal age, and Alexa tried to make it seem like she was some sort of minor, and this teacher was like grooming her or something. Anyway, with that being said, she's come a long way. You know, gone a day, all of that. Let's see what we're gonna sit. Let's 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 take this character a lot further. She's another character that, in some ways, kind of grew up on the show. I mean, she was there for, I was going to say the second Michael, the guy's name is Garnett. I think his name is Garnett. Do something with this character. You know, I'm just going to sit there and just throw this. I'm just going to just throw this out there. It makes me wonder. Now, if this show was on Hulu, would it be a lot better? You know, would they actually do more? Would they actually have the funding to do more? And I know I've, I've said before, they got Disney money and everything like that. But I'm like, well, what are you doing with this money? Because this is, um... Yeah, I'm just like, what are they doing with this money? Like, anyway... I think the last scene is with Cody and Britt, and I'm going to be, I'm tired of saying I'm going to be honest. Um, you know, this scene doesn't hit for me for so many reasons. One, because you know at some point this actress is going to leave. Okay? And most likely we're going to sit there and get a recast. I forgot her name. I think her name is Kelly something, but I'm not too sure. She's been playing Brit for so long that she knows her mannerisms. It's like Kelly Monaco that plays Sam. She knows the, the mannerisms and everything like that. And when you had the other actress that came in, you know, people give her props and everything like that. But it's like you knew that the scenes was just not hitting the same. It's the same thing with Chad Duel and Michael. When he was gone, you had that other guy, you know, he did the best that he can do. But you can tell that it just didn't, it didn't hit the same, okay? It was not, it didn't have the same impact. Um, so knowing that at this point throughout their scene, they're starting to get a little bit closer at the Brit once again, starts acting all bratty and bitchy. Um, and Cody started talking about phase on and, oh, you know, what's, What's the story between your dad and my dad? I'm like, why does that matter? Why, why, why does that matter? I don't understand why that matters. Um, you know, there's one point Cody was like, hey, you know, listen, you can sit there and just leave and, you know, go back to society setups and uh, good luck. And then she stands there and she thinks about it. She's like, okay, now I'm going to sit there and start to act right. And I'm just like, I don't, like, I mean, granted, I get because it's a soap opera that, this is going to play out the way it's going to play out. In reality, no man would sit there and sit through half of the attitude and the pushback that they're getting from her. I mean, on top of that, I mean, Britt did sit there and kind of tell us got to kick rocks a long time ago. And, well, to be fair, he didn't really listen. So, there is that, too. Um, anyway... What the hell is his name? Cody was, you know, inviting her to go to the picnic. And she was like, yeah, you know, I'll go. So they got their little somewhat half-hearted date that they're going to be doing. Um, so, yeah, there's that. I think that's about it. I really do. I think that's about it. No. Lately, I've been doing a lot of what I like to call somewhat angry rants. I mean, you know, you can sit there and look at it like criticism. And I guess for the most part, that's what it is. But, I mean, the thing is, I didn't always feel this way about this show. If you go back and you watch some of my early reviews, stuff with Cyrus and everything like that. I just remember... Being on the camera, just laughing it up, just, you know, 
using laser sounds and everything like that. And it's not to sit there and say that what I'm doing isn't fun. It's still fun, but I can't sit there and hide my feelings. Yeah. When things bother me, I can't sit there and just be oh, da, 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 da. I just I, I I can't do that. Um. And I want to thank the people that have been that have been rocking me so far because I know that my reviews have been somewhat on the negative side. But that's just the reflection of how I feel about the show. And don't get me wrong, I I seriously hope that they do pick up as far as the energy and everything like that. I don't know, I guess because sometimes I'll sit there and I'll get down on reviews. And before I go to bed, usually I'll sit there and watch either Brock TV or on the Kia, DC Sanctuary, you know, watch some of their stuff. And but like they're usually like a lot more upbeat and happy and I'm just like man I remember when I used to sit there and feel like that about this show. Good old days. Um but I don't know. You know, at the end of the day, I have to sit there and be me and I have to sit there and, and say how I feel about these shows. And it it sucks because again, if we don't you know, if you don't watch days or whatever, days is moving to peacock. Television is just not the same. It hasn't been the same for the for a very long time, and for the most part, streaming and stuff like that is just taking over. You know, it's just pretty much taking over. They don't get the live views like they used to get because people are busy. You know, they don't have time to sit there and. Sometimes be home at 3 o'clock and 12 o'clock and whatever else time that they got to sit there and be there. So they watch it on the stream and stuff. But, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to lie. I don't even know where this damn rant is going. I know I, I had a point. I think I was sitting there talking about, I don't know, my feelings or something being too negative or whatever. And I can't even apologize for that because, again... I'm just going to sit there and be honest. But, because um, now I'm just starting to ramble at this point. Before I go, I said this in my b, &B review, but I'll say in this one also. Monday, August 22nd, it's going to be my birthday. And that day, I'm not going to really be doing any reviews. I'm still going to be watching the show. Big bucket of ice cream, um, some snacks, and just kind of just chilling. Um, catch up on some movies. But I'll sit there, you know, Tuesday throughout the week, I'll still be sitting there doing reviews. But Monday, you know, I just kind of want to sit there and just chill, you know. And it's weird because I enjoy doing this. So this is not like one of those things where it's like, oh, I'm just going to sit there and just. You know, I don't have to, I, I love doing this, but I figured, you know, Monday, I'm going to take that day for me. Um, but I'm still going to be one of doing the live stream on Sunday at 6, as long as my work day doesn't change that day. You know, that's where I'll be at, 6 um, Eastern Pacific stand, Standard Time. So yeah, with that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe, have a great Safe weekend, and I will see everyone in the next.